difficulties among the convoy escorts, and there was a big waste of product. When a convoy got through, the whole city knew. The trucks brought vital supplies, flour. We really needed matches. And cigarettes. Can you imagine soldiers without cigarettes? We were kept alive by the convoy from Tel Aviv. We started with uh, military operations to make sure that the road between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem will not be endangered by the big villages or towns that were along the road. Uh, well from came all the attackers on the convoys. A special Haganah brigade was formed to open the road to Jerusalem. The system was to attack the village, to give warning to the civilians, to destroy the village. And by the elimination of the villages alone, and adjacent to the road, we were sure that there would be no attacks. The Jews tried to seize Castel, a village controlling the road to Jerusalem. It was a Palmach unit, my troops, that captured the Castel. And it was here that Abdel Qadir el Husseini, the Palestinian leader, was killed. Enraged, Husseini's soldiers went to recover the body of their leader. The Arabs counterattacked. Our reinforcements were wiped out. It was a very black day. Down the road from Castel, there would be another battle that day. Two Jewish extremist organizations, Irgun and Lehi, which had fought the British, were eager to prove themselves in the new war. It was such a tragedy. Der Yassin was a lovely village. The events at Der Yassin would haunt relations between Jews and Arabs for years to come. Der Yassin had stayed out of the fighting. It was not on the Haganah's list of hostile villages. I ran into a man who had left us for the terrorists. He told me that the Irgun and Lehi had got permission from our commander to attack the village of Dir Yassin. He was very proud. The Irgun and Lehi forces were ordered to take Dir Yassin. I ran to my commander and asked, why did you allow it? He said, I suggested two other targets. They turned them down. He said, I can't shoot them, can I? So I decided to spy on them. Their loudspeakers blared out, lay down your arms. Run for your lives. Then I heard our machine gun. I was kneeling down like this. When I looked up, I saw the village ablaze. Their attack lit up the whole village. The village was not the soft target the Jews had expected. From the windows of their houses, Arabs were shooting at our soldiers. And from a force of 132, we had 42 wounded and six dead. The commander ordered a house-to-house -house attack. So I gave the order. Before entering a house, throw a couple of grenades inside. They threw a grenade into one house. Twenty-eight were killed. It was impossible to attack the enemy without hurting their families. It was difficult. It was painful, and I'm sorry we had to do it. But we had no choice. They 
After the battle, they took 14 prisoners. They lined them up by the quarry and mowed them down. They threw their bodies in the quarry. That's what happened. While this was going on, Jews came from the next village. Most of them were religious, by the way. They started yelling, bastards, murderers, what are you doing? Some shouted in Hebrew, others in Yiddish. They stopped the massacre. 110 Arabs died in Dir Yassin. Some died fighting, others were murdered. The survivors were taken to Jerusalem. We gathered in Jerusalem at the Hebron Gate. We checked who was missing and who had survived. Then the Palestinian leaders arrived, including Dr. Khalidi. I asked Dr. Khalidi how we should cover the story. He said, we must make the most of this. So he wrote a press release stating that at Dir Yassin, children were murdered, pregnant women were raped, all sorts of atrocities. Arab radio stations passed on the false reports, ignoring the protests of the witnesses. We said there was no rape. He said, we have to say this, so the Arab armies will come to liberate Palestine from the Jews. This was our biggest mistake. We did not realize how our people would react. As soon as they heard that women had been raped at Dir Yassin, Palestinians fled in terror. They ran away from all our villages. In the next few months, over half the Arab population, three quarters of a million people, fled their homes in Palestine. Israel never allowed them back. The British did little to prevent the atrocities committed by both sides. As they prepared to leave, they washed their hands of the whole mess. At the United Nations, the Jews announced their plans. Not later than May 16th next, a provisional Jewish government will commence to function in cooperation with the representatives of the United Nations then in Palestine.